But if that was the apparition's intent, it was a tragic failure. Relations between colonists and Indians grew steadily worse. The reason remained gold, or rather, the lack of it. This immense gold mine is close to the site of the battle. Today, huge earth movers must sift through thousands of tons of rock to find the last few flecks that remain from Columbus's day. In the modern mine, the ore is refined to get the gold. With no such technology at his disposal, Columbus had to resort to a different system. He simply demanded that every Indian on the island pay him a tribute in gold. Enough gold every three months to fill a trinket the Spanish had once traded to the Indians for gold, a hawk's bell. No one, but no one, no Indian could provide Columbus with a hawk's bell full of gold. They were not miners. They did not know how to dig gold from the mines or wash gold. And therefore, Columbus's tribute system failed immediately. And so too did Columbus's authority over the colonists. Open rebellion now broke out, and Columbus hanged some of the rebels in an attempt to regain control. With these hangings, Columbus lost the last of his credibility as an effective governor. And an investigator sent out from Spain arrested him and clapped him in irons. Tradition has it that Columbus was imprisoned in this tower in what became the new capital of the colony, Santo Domingo. Today, Tourists can climb the stairs Columbus was said to have climbed and visit the chamber in which he was held. Columbus's statue now stands proudly in the main square of Santo Domingo. But when he was sent back from here to Spain in disgrace in the year 1500, it wasn't just the end of his governorship, it was the end of any further influence he would have in the lands he discovered. Columbus's replacement as governor brought with him hundreds of new colonists. He completely reorganized the colony's administration. The Spanish were settled across the island in Spanish-style towns. As for the Indians, most of whom had fled into the hills during Columbus's rule, they were rounded up and forced to go to work for the settlers. Mostly, that work was in the newly opened gold mines. The Indians were also made to pan for gold in the island's rivers. In order to organize the Indians for washing gold, they instituted a new system of forced labor called the encomienda by means of which the colonial government gave each Spaniard who just wanted to do so a group of Indians which were to be put to, which were to, be put to work in the rivers on the condition that this Spaniard should Christianize the Indians. We know that the Spaniards did not bother in indoctrinating their Indians. They just worked them in the rivers until their death. 